So something you just said to me was you don't know how to feel about protests. Yeah, I don't have experience with protests. I haven't been involved. I haven't held up signs. I haven't gone door to door right. protesting things. Yeah. Um, I have had the option to. In Detroit, they had some activists that were standing outside of places that would sell fur. And I just didn't know if it would be effective. I didn't know if it was something that I should be involved in. Um, I thought if people were going to a store buying fur, they would already be aware of where it came from <laughs> and not really care that yeah. <laughs> there are people standing outside claiming that they are murderers. So just for the, uh, how long have you been vegan? To about two years. Right. So I think some vegans, like direct action everywhere, try to present veganism as if protest, street protest, is really the core of what being vegan is all about. Yeah. And for some people, it's something very minor or it's something, it's a footnote, it's something around the margins. Like veganism exists, it's this movement, it does this long list of things. Mm -hmm. But there's really no obvious reason why protest has got to be at the center of it. Yeah, well, the main reason I can think of is that you yeah. feel helpless, you feel like right. you need to do something. Right, right. Yeah, we were talking about with that, you were just saying that with Wayne's Young, like that sure. after years and years of not feeling like he's being effective. Right. Feeling he like you want to, to make this, a difference, right? Yeah, yeah, he came to this conclusion that protest would be something that would right. be right. immediate. Be, right, you know. but in terms, of, in terms of that feeling, like when you think about it, that's you raging against public indifference. So yes. it's, it's the people right. who are not vegan that's who you're reaching towards. But there's another way to take that feeling. Like some people feel like the core of veganism is about the animal sanctuaries mm. or is about rescuing stray cats. And like that's not a joke. You can meet people and like their whole fucking lives, like every day they're spending hours and hours mm -hmm. taking care of stray cats. So again, that's I mean that I think that there's something similar there psychologically like wanting to feel like you're making a difference. Mm -hmm. But that feeling is being put into animal sanctuaries or raising cats. You know, there are these other these these other directions to take it in. Yeah, so. like I know that feeling because just I went vegan overnight after sure. watching Cowspiracy and I was I told all my friends and family that I thought would be interested, and yeah. I, the the response was just lackluster. It wasn't what I wanted to hear. It wasn't the same response that I had. Like, why do people not know this? Right. Um, <laughs> how did I not know this? Or how was I blind to it? Maybe ignorant. Uh, so yeah, I do know that feeling of just wanting to scream at people, sure. like wake up. But sure. um, it, it's sometimes it's come up here. Like when you said a day when we weren't particularly busy, like we weren't doing anything particular. You, you have just said to me, you may not remember this. You said to me, like, there has to be something more we can do. Mm. I mean, about veganism, you know, like where it, it just comes. And, you know, I feel you like, you know, like, and, you know, again, I don't know what was, you probably had something on your mind, probably something, there's probably something particular you had in mind. But like, I know it just comes up sometimes. We're just like, there has to be something more we can do. You know, it, it, you know, it can't just be a diet, you know. Yeah, no, it, it has to be something else, like, because just the diet won't won't be effective in creating more vegan people. I think maybe for a short period of time, people will see it as a fad diet, but I don't think right. that it will, right. mm, yeah, right. be a long-term solution. Well, you know, like, uh, I, I believe me, I'm not, I'm really not boasting when I say this. If anything, I'm laughing at myself being self-critical, but I had a situation at work where the topic of the day, the students have this organized workshop type of thing. I had no advance warning. I show up and I'm told like five seconds before we went to the topic of the day is animals. Mm -hmm. And the students want me to give a lecture about animals in English. So this is partly, these are Chinese university students practicing their, their English and so on. Mm -hmm. And you know, I basically gave them a lecture about veganism. I was speaking both in English and in, and in Chinese. Now, <laughs> I think I'm the first person to be critical or self-critical of that and say, look, you know, like real life is not activism. Your job is not activism. These kids, that they don't want to hear it. You know what I mean? Like there are so many levels in which I can say this is kind of goofy or ridiculous. But uh, I, again, you know, I kind of couldn't help myself. Mm -hmm. And it did have an impact. If you guys have seen on this channel, there's one video that's called They Don't Pay Me to Sing. And it's the students singing this song they do at this workshop, so every time at this workshop. Anyway, I gave them this, this lecture and it ended by saying, the conclusion of it was, every day you are killing animals for no good reason. And there was this kind of nervous laugh, but that was, you know, this, this laugh that, that went around. Mm -hmm. And um, 
I said it's true, and there were other elements of it too. I mean, I'm, I'm by far the biggest human being at this event. Like, there are none, none of the Chinese guys. Like, look, in China, there. If you hang out in the basketball court, you can meet bigger Chinese guys. But I said, look, I'm, I'm bigger than you. I'm stronger than you. I'm stronger than anyone here. You know, um, there are no college athletes there. You, you do not need to meet every day. You are killing animals for no reason. And you know, this and you know, so that was really the conclusion was my saying to them you know all these other topics got covered pretty briefly because i was i was invited to give a lecture about animals mm -hmm. and that's what i'm going to talk about is eating animals you know i'm not going to say how great it is to have a pet dog or something and then they sang that song yeah. <laughs> and that was the most somber rendition of that song i've 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 ever heard I won't you know be shy. yeah give it a try <laughs> I, I can be the one I really, really, really want, want to yeah, be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's this, but yeah, it was, it was a really downbeat. <laughs> After you just said, yeah, it was this, kill animals every day. Yeah, yeah it was this magic. really downbeat version of the song. Yeah. But I, look, I just mentioned, so, you know, like, um, <laughs> I, I don't know, like, you know, there are even other words. There's activism, there's public outreach, there's education, there's getting organized. There's many different ways to politicize veganism. There's many ways to try to make a difference in the world. Yeah. But I feel, I mean, like for you, like you're mostly talking about your college days, I assume. You know. Yeah, uh, no, it was after it was after right. I had graduated from college. Oh, I okay. Well, I'll like, rephrase. Okay, I'll rephrase this question. I think what I, what I wanted to say was just like during college, many people have a kind of unexamined idealization of street protest yeah that for every movement whether it's whether it's feminism or the war in iraq mm -hmm. that for every movement the seal of authenticity is street protest yeah 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 i, I think i told you in college at least in, yeah. this, in the city that i was in there weren't very many protests for yeah. that, that i knew of at least yeah which is surprising because it's yeah it's did, a, did people take buses to go to protests in new york city or something in bigger cities or what? Just, i honestly don't know okay yeah I don't, so it's probably, probably yeah, yeah, yeah but I, yeah. I wasn't involved politically yeah which i, I do regret yeah. like i wish i had gotten more involved with yeah I'm, <laughs> look, anyway. it's weird like look so I, i'm from downtown toronto and downtown toronto culturally and politically is really very different from the suburbs probably a lot of cities are like that but mm -hmm. toronto is one example and I went to the largest street protest in the history of Canada. I think it still has the record, maybe something else. But it was basically against expanding the war into Afghanistan, against that kind of, you know, after 2001, it was against uh, the war in Iraq and Afghanistan at whatever stage we were at then, I forget. I think it was before the war in Afghanistan started yet, you know, at that stage. And so a huge number of people attended. And, you know, it, it was downtown. And so we walking along this main street in Toronto, and I could look up into the windows in the shopping malls on either side, one shopping mall in particular, these big glass windows, mm -hmm. and the expressions on the faces of the people who were not participating of incomprehension and condemnation and just kind of disgust yeah. for this merge. It was a peace protest. I mean, it's like the purest guy. It was basically, we don't want a war. We don't want to expand this war. For this. It's an incredibly simple message compared to veganism, you know what I mean? Yeah, they were it's probably like, just keeping scoring because they thought it was unpatriotic of the people. Like, well, not because this is Canada. This is not even the state, so it's uh, not. Yeah. It's, it doesn't it's even true. have that. No, it's really, it really. No, it's a good point. It's really different in that way. There isn't even an element of patriotism. So, like, we don't, like, I don't think the word patriot was ever, patriotism was ever used. Uh -huh. Yeah, because remember, September 11th didn't happen in Canada. I mean, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, it's a very different kind of perspective. It's like, well, why is why are we even getting involved then? Yeah, that was probably their the yeah. Canadian perspective on that. I'm, you know, so I just say, like, you know, um, I don't know. Like, look, other people at that protest, do they remember that as like the pinnacle of their political? Like, do they look back on that as a really happy, meaningful memory? Like when they were in university, when they went to that protest, when they were younger, maybe when they were older, maybe they were fifty years old when it happened. But now they yeah. really like I, I. For other people, subjectively and emotionally, do they really idealize protest as something that, from my perspective, it is not? Because, you know, for me, obviously, the protest didn't work. You know, we had then more than yeah. 10 years of war in Iraq and Afghanistan. You know, it, didn't, it didn't win. It didn't get, it didn't get outcomes. Right. And, you know, it didn't. At that protest, I didn't meet one person or have one new friend or one connection. You know, there was nothing in terms of mobilization or organization. There was no political organization came out of it. There wasn't even anything within, say, the most left-wing party in Canada. You know what yeah. I mean? Like it didn't, it didn't have any political outcomes that way. 
So I just I look back at that. No, I don't feel ashamed. I went to that program. I don't feel bad about it in that mm. sense. Yeah. But if anything, what I was learning from that kind of experience, um, y- you know, I, I I was very critical of of what the role is of these protests in people's own kind of dream life. Yeah. One yeah. That, one that recently happened after Trump was elected was a women's march, right. and I could have gone to one in Ann Arbor. Um, yeah. For that, so that was one that just recently happened, or I could have gone to the Capitol in Michigan, Lansing, yeah. but um, no, I didn't. I didn't participate in that, um, and it was kind of out of a sense of feeling like, what, what is this accomplishing, uh, other than kind of bringing women together to stand up against Trump? But I, right. just the things that he said, uh, cause, because he had just been elected, he didn't put any policies that were misogynistic or. Yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah, what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is about just about the grab him by the pussy like scandal yes. that came out. Yeah, like, right, right, right. <laughs> you know, that was uh, right. Uh, I'm not defending Trump, and I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, yeah, not in support of him, but I don't know what the women's march would do. Um, what, what outcomes can it have? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, you you must remember the Occupy Wall Street period. Mm-hmm. Now, I was that 2011. Yeah, I think something was, like that. Yeah. yeah. And then carried on into 2012, I think, something like that. So, you know, I was involved at that time with First Nations politics. Mm-hmm. First Nations is our polite word in Canada for what Americans call American Indians, Native people, Indigenous people. You know say? So first, mm-hmm. just, I just know it's First Nations. Um, but, you know, for me, there was this contrast at that time between what I thought was really the meaninglessness and incoherence of the Occupy Wall Street protests. Now, it's partly criticism. It's partly just I, I don't agree with. Like, the parts of their agenda that are coherent... I actually disagree with. I don't want to go back to the gold standard. Their actual economic reforms they were calling for, I don't agree with. I don't want to go back to the gold standard and uh, some of their crazy uh, particular economic theories. But anyway, so that was that was very much going on. And then we had these, from my perspective, really meaningful and really coherent protests by and for First Nations. So in that area, it's the Cree, the Ojibwe, the Dene, the Blackfoot. These are the native peoples that that part of Canada. And to me, I remember saying to my, my ex-wife, my wife at the time, saying, look, I feel like this is the contrast between the politics of the moment and the politics of the century. Mm. Like, here are these protests for a cause that's gone on for more than 100 years, and I think it's still going to be going on 100 years in the future. Mm. And here's this Occupy Wall Street thing, and people think it's a big... What, what, where is it going to be even five years from now? What are the outcomes going to be? And, you know, I, I don't know whether it's sad or, or, or positive, but I think I won them my bet. I mean, I, I do feel that basically nothing positive, no real outcomes, came out of Occupy Wall Street, despite the fact that it was so enormous. It was so well, widely covered in the media. Yeah. It occurred in so many cities. And, again, so for me, different people draw different lessons from this. For me, I would say, well, okay, look at Occupy Wall Street and how little it accomplished. And now we have to face up to the fact that as vegans, even if we were as successful as Occupy Wall Street, we'd still be a failure. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's why I kind of, the reason I like your channel so much is that you talk about legal change, like actually (laughs) changing policies uh, to help the future of the vegan movement. Um, Because, oh yeah, and one thing that you had talked about recently that kind of blew my mind, I did not really realize that um, the JFK assassin- assassination was involved so much in oh. civil rights. Like, oh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. With, I thought it was more about the sure. protests, the protests that were right. so like important. Um, and that's that's what gets covered in my his- that's what was covered in my history class. Oh really? Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah. 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 Um, so I, I didn't you know realize that it was something. <laughs> sure. So, I th- yeah. I mean, I think it's also a question of like wallpaper in terms of the way newspapers present a story. Like, for decades and decades, the main, like, locus for political discussions was the front page of a newspaper. Mm -hmm. And they would put a photograph of protesters while having the latest story about civil rights or the Vietnam War or whatever the the controversy was. And very often, those photographs were indeed focused on young, good-looking people, Mm -hmm. young, good-looking women you know, wearing bikinis with flowers painted on their butt. Right. That was what yeah. dominated the front pages of, of newspapers. You know, actually, I just mentioned as, for that example, when the anti-Vietnam War protests started, the core of the organization, the core of the anti-war movement was actually people old enough to remember World War I. Oh. Not even World War, they were anti, it was the same anti-war activists 
who had fought against World War I wow. in the 1950s and 1960s because they were, you know, so th those were not the people who were naked, half naked and having flowers painted them, but they weren't the flower child, you know, uh, uh, yeah. protesters. So, uh, you know, but the problem is exactly thinking in terms of cause and effect. Okay, so this, this young woman in a bikini or these few young women in bikinis who make a photogenic image for the newspapers to exploit, frankly, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, is that really the story of why the Vietnam War ended when it did? Mm -hmm. Is that the story of why civil rights legislation was passed when it passed? Mm -hmm. And again, especially if you're looking at it in terms of legislation, the answer is no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. And in, I mean, again, in, in terms of, uh, you know, the, the role of gender politics in that, uh, LBJ, so LBJ is the president of the United States who replaced JFK yeah. uh, after his... Uh, Unexpected demise. Unexpected for some. Expected. Expected for yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, you know, LBJ, his wife went from town to town. So uh, her nickname was Lady Bird Johnson. And she gave these speeches directly addressed to, you know, white supremacists. And white supremacists were very much the majority or very, you know, mm -hmm. strong ideology. That was the default view of society in the American South. She went from town to town explaining why her husband, a white Texan, was supporting this new legislation that would integrate you know, both specific institutions like the CIA and the FBI, you know, federal institutions for the first time hiring black men yeah. and would, uh, you know, integrate universities and education, what have you. Uh, that, I mean, I just say that's, I mean, can you call that activism, standing up in front of that audience? I mean, it's, it's from the top down. It's someone in a position of power and privilege yeah. who's changing the world and changing history and changing society. And the myth is that the street protest is people who are powerless and voiceless. Mm. Taking, taking to the streets. Right? Yeah, yeah, that is, yeah, wow, that's a contrast. Yeah, yesterday you were just telling me that uh, a mayor in Bangkok, was it? That, or Chiang Mai yeah, or yeah. something that was vegan for like 20 years? Oh, yeah, Or right, 20 right, years right. ago, he right, was right, vegan. Right, 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 right. And yeah. yeah, so that maybe that's something that, you know, I wish we had more public figures who were vegan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it could be something. Somebody that could. Right, um, well, I mean, I, I guess, so, I mean, again, maybe that's in flight across. I mean, what is more important? You know, when you're looking at protests, I mean, obviously, celebrity politics get covered, that we have actors and musicians who are vegan. Yeah. But, yeah, somebody like a mayor, somebody like a member of parliament, a politician who's vegan, can obviously have way more impact yeah. than disgruntled university students, I guess. Yeah. It's definitely not going to happen with Trump, but I wish that, you know, Obama, sure. both Michelle and Barack Obama were very, uh, they were very intent on getting people more concerned about their health and yes about move move was michelle obama's like yeah, government yeah, yeah. program to try to get uh kids more active um i think well right and well, so now both uh, bill clinton and al gore are vegan in bill clinton's case he um, identifies primarily as a dietary vegan as a health vegan yeah but al gore is more or less an ecological and ethical vegan okay. so it's a few decades too late for that to matter yeah but yeah conservatives kind of think al gore is a joke anyway so. yeah sure. <laughs> well he had a shot i mean he had a shot he was the next last president of the united states you, you know he was he did win an election have, he should have been the he president was, he was elected president yeah. of the United States. You know. <laughs> Didn't, didn't quite turn out as planned. Again, unexpected for some. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, I mean, you know, look, the other thing is about all these strategies is that they're not mutually exclusive. So, yeah. you know, like it's not as if revolution from below and careful political change from above are, are mutually exclusive options. Yeah. And how much did the protests for the civil rights movement, how much did it influence um, when sure. and why the Right. Why? Why legal change was made? Right. Um, yeah. So you can't you can't say it was you know there was no part it it played no part in that. But right. Well, look. I mean, on a human scale, these things can be mutually exclusive. But I mean, when I was looking at Earthling Ed in my recent video, um, I see a lot of what he does as praiseworthy and uh, sympathetic and laudable. Yeah, me too. Um, however, in my life, uh, it, it is an absolute either or. I, well, living in China, I have no civil rights. You know, I have yeah. no freedom of speech. I can't do street protests. Yeah, we, we can't go out on the street. We can't go out to a restaurant right. and protest in front 
Yeah, and <laughs> that sorry. and that would be really ridiculous here, and it wouldn't it wouldn't make sense in this culture or otherwise too. Where yeah. there are there are pretty strong roots, I and mean, right here where we are, the local Buddhist organization requires all of its members to refuse to eat meat. So we've talked about this. Refusing to eat meat is not the same as veganism. It's not even the same as vegetarianism, really. Yeah. But that's a requirement of the Buddhist hierarchy here in, in Dohong, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. So, you know, vegetarianism, the, the basic idea of veganism does have local roots that you could work with through all those, all those issues and opportunities. Um, but, yeah, in terms of one person and how much time, how much opportunity you have, these things are, are mutually exclusive. But, I mean, when I look at somebody like Earthling Ed... I more think of it in terms of the future, like, well, okay, so now for one, in that one year, you had 300 conversations with complete strangers who didn't want to hear what you had to say. Fundamentally, they don't yeah. want to hear what you have to say. Some respond positively, some respond negatively. They have no interest. They don't want to hear what you say. What I'm interested in is, okay, now looking ahead to the next five years, how much could you get done if you were talking to people who were interested and did want to hear what you had to say. Yeah. You know, to me, that's, uh, even for Earthling Ed, for this specific guy, it's like, okay, if he starts talking to people who actually want to hear what he has to say and actually want to cooperate with him, want to get stuff done, then I think he's going to accomplish way more in the next five years. And it doesn't mean that I think what he's done with the last one year is, is bad and evil and wrong. Yeah. He, even, I think he was yeah. in that video because we were watching the top 10. From yes, the yeah, yeah, he was giving he was, a speech. He was giving yeah. a speech to people yeah, who yeah, were yeah. into animal rights. So, yeah. yeah. But if he did more of that, I think. That, mm. Mm. See, see what it leads to. See if it leads yeah. to actual organization and actual lobbying or some, some other kind of activism that is measurable. But you remember, babe, uh, I got an email from um, Joey Carbstrong. Mm -hmm. And so Joey Carbstrong is another guy. He's mostly based on street. Street theater, so, yeah. you know, where they play films and they have uh, not, not in your face disruptive protests, but a kind of uh, more quiet protests, mm -hmm. and then one on one conversations with people. So while they're playing this documentary showing slaughterhouse conditions, he goes up and has polite one on one conversations with people. So that, that's really what he's into, that, that's what he devotes his time and effort to. And he said to me in his message to me simply that he, he respects what I do on my channel, likes what he does, but he likes what I'm doing because he recognizes we need different kinds of strategies for different kinds of people. Yeah, right. I do admire what Earthling Ed and Joey Carbstrong do. Sure, sure. And yeah, sure. I can definitely understand why they do it, and I wish them the best. But yeah. I, I hope, I hope they do make it make a change for some like individuals right? or on a bigger scale. Well, look, look, PETA, People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals. They paid the money and they got every single advertisement in the subway station. You remember yeah. this thing? So there's just one subway station in London. Yeah, that's cool. How you know who, who can you know who can complain? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. I don't have the money to do that, but that's an amazing form of activism. Even though as vegans we all hate PETA, and the, yeah. the ad pretty much just said go vegan. Like every single thing, it showed a picture of a cute pig and said go vegan. There, there was not much, so it was a strictly vegan, yeah. you know, act of protest. Yeah. So I mean, you know, it's, it's different strategies for different people who have who have different means that are disposal. Right. And other so people on. might respond differently to the different forms too. Right. Like some yeah, people yeah, yeah. might respond to Earthling Ed's approach. Some people might respond to the ads that sure. that Peta put up in the subway station. Sure. And, and and it's an amazing fact that some people have converted to veganism because of this channel and have sent yeah. an email talking yeah, about that. Right. So I do assume it's a very particular type of person <laughs> yeah. who respond to these intellectual discussions and, and, and become vegan. Yeah, but, the Onion Knight, he made a video about uh, protests, and he was talking yeah. about how, for him, uh, this, this may not work for other people, but actually being screamed at in a restaurant would have worked for him. Oh, really? And, oh, and I, was, I can kind of sympathize with him because... Uh, like when I would watch Cowspiracy, it made me realize these things that had been a little bit under the surface or just in the background right. that I didn't didn't think of. And maybe right. if someone had been yelling at me in a restaurant, like, "Hey, you're eating an animal! Like, stop!" Right. I, I might have responded more so than other people. But in his video, he said, "Yeah, but I'm kind of a weirdo that way. You know, right. I, I don't yeah, think yeah, most yeah, people yeah, are that way." Generalize about yeah. 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 So uh, anyway, I other people will respond differently. And when I first watched Cowspiracy and told other people to watch it, other people did not respond the same way. Yep. They just said, oh, that's, that's a shame. That's a shame. <laughs> like, right. Or that's a lie. Like, my parents were, my dad specifically, like, oh, was really? really skeptical, really skeptical about the yeah, facts yeah, yeah, yeah. and, yeah. you know, about the ecology and how it's, or how animal agriculture affects ecology. Yeah. Yeah. 
And like you said, some people in Canadian culture just say yeah. that's a lie. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's a lie. Any, any, any inconvenient information, they just respond to with, uh, with denial. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, in, in terms of how I feel about that, I mean, again, this, this is still this question of kind of is protest central to veganism? Does it define veganism? Is veganism defined in terms of protest? And is, well, to quote direct action everywhere, is activism the moral baseline? And when they say activism, they mean street protest. Yes. They mean disruption. So street protest and inside uh, bakeries and you know grocery stores and what have you, mm -hmm. uh, or is it something marginal? You know, in terms of my whole life, including my, my personal life, my private life, talking to people face to face, when you're talking to other grown adults, I don't see how it is possible to be an adult and not question where does milk come from, where does yeah. food come from? You know, and like I I mean that on such a simple level. I don't even mean it's an ethical obligation or a philosophical obligation, or an intellectual obligation. I'm just saying, how is it possible that you, like the person I'm talking to, got to be 25 years old or 35 years old, 55 years old, and you never questioned, where does my food come from? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that makes veganism completely different from any other social movement. Because I, I actually completely sympathize. I, like, you know, I did all this research on Cambodia, yeah. but I'm not an expert on Syria. Mm -hmm. And I can't be. I can't really derail my whole life and start researching politics in Syria just because there's a new war in Syria, you know? And I'm tempted to. I'll be honest, when the, when the civil war started in Syria, I remember hearing this one interview on the radio and weeping. I was, I was sitting there alone weeping. It was an interview with uh, actually a rock musician from Syria, and he was talking about the body count. It was uh, very emotionally moving to me. Yeah. But, you know, it is, it is, my point is I totally sympathize with people just saying, look, I know I'm not from Syria. Syria is not part of my life. They're not interested. You know, I, I can only choose to be interested in so many things. But <laughs> what I eat and drink. Yeah, it's something that you can do every day. You can choose. To yeah. yeah. It's something you can't not do every day. Yeah. You can't. You, <laughs> you know. Do, you must. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And oh, I was going to say at the time that I watched Cowspiracy, a, a few months prior, I had been in this um, state of really questioning what I'm going to do with the future of my life, <laughs> with my future, what I'm going to right. do, how I'm going to make a positive impact on the world, or at least not make a negative impact. And a lot of it had to do with the environment. How can I, how can I be more environmentally friendly? Um, how can I be a better, mm -hmm. just member of this human race, member of the planet? Yeah. For, for both um, of us, really, ecology came first. We were kind of into ecology before we got into veganism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then a couple months later, I was just scrolling through Netflix, and I saw this documentary that was talking about the impacts of animal agriculture on ecology. Mm -hmm. So that's why I got interested in it. So I think if you don't have that base baseline interest in certain parts of veganism, like, you know, there are three basic things, like the ecology, um, your health, and then... Just sure. caring about animal welfare. So sure. if one of if one of three of those doesn't interest somebody, I don't know. I don't know how to reach them. How to how to make them care about any of them. Right. Let well, alone to care about veganism in general. <laughs> look, the the health aspect though it does change things. Civil rights couldn't offer to make you more beautiful, you know, <laughs> or to live longer, yeah. or to have better, clearer sinuses, or clearer skin, or think more clearly. Just to be good. Yeah, I mean, it was just, it's, I mean, like, you know, like, people joke about white guilt. Yeah, well, back in 1955, white guilt was really fucking real. Like, yeah. it's really worth talking about that it was in your face every day that, you know, uh, this school was whites only and this restaurant was whites only and sometimes this water fountain was whites only. Like, white guilt is not really to be trivialized. Yeah. And, you know, again, sometimes in Canada, when we're talking about First Nations, talking about Native people. Again, I don't think, I don't think we should joke about white guilt. I think white guilt is... You know, real, right. but still having a guilt-based movement, and some vegans, I think the protest-based vegans, they want to make it mm -hmm. a guilt-based movement. But look, so to, two real quick examples. I mean, the health aspect really, really matters. When I was talking to my own mom, I forget a couple days ago or a couple weeks ago, you know, um, my mom wants to be more involved with my life in the next three years, and I was basically saying to her, "Look, I don't really know if you've got three years." You know, like in terms of being healthy and active and not in the hospital and taking jets all over the world, which is what she does. She flies all around the world constantly and doing book tours and lectures. This is the way she lives. I said, look, and you may not realize it, but the cholesterol in your diet doesn't just make you fat and clog your arteries. It clogs your brain. Atherosclerosis really needs to be thought of as a spectrum disorder. You know, the atherosclerosis of the brain 
is terrifying. Mm -hmm. Google it. You'll regret you Google it. <laughs> It'll watch for the rest of your life. But you know, uh, I'm I'm looking at her, and that 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 health aspect is really is really pressing. Um, and you know, the health aspect. I'm looking at my own ex-wife, my own daughter. They're now lacto vegetarian, mm -hmm. so they're vegetarians who consume dairy. And you know, I am. I do not think. I think basically veganism is for adults. This deals with grown-up issues. I'm, I don't want to have a guilt-based approach mm -hmm. to my daughter drinking milk. Uh, I don't want to be, have a protest-based approach. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know what? Take a four-year-old to a, you know, fucking bunch of people <laughs> screaming on the street. You know, that doesn't mean this. But the, the health aspect, you know, it's, so I just say, like, uh, you know, I know we don't talk about the health aspect that often on this channel. Probably because there are other channels who already handle it well enough. Um, yeah, but it's it's important. I I told that to my parents too. Another yeah. documentary <laughs> I had them watch. I actually watched it with them. Was Beducated, right. and that talked a lot more about the health aspects right. than Cowspiracy did. And I would I told them, you know, all of my grandparents suffered from some level of dementia yes. and so atherosclerosis of the brain, and it just doesn't seem to be very effective. I, I think my mom has probably yeah. like been more convinced by it because she's a nurse. But my dad, not so much. Um, so yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So I mean, you know, look, I, I have to admit, I, I would be uncomfortable with veganism being primarily or wholly a a, a health based movement. I'm, I'm just being honest with you, and I do feel you know in that in a video a few weeks ago, I quoted that surgeon. He's a heart surgeon and heart expert. Well, mm. he was actually saying. He yeah. avoids using the word vegan because he doesn't want to use an ethical. He just is talking about dietary health. Diet. Yeah. yeah, just talking about heart heart attacks and, and what have you. And he's advocating for a vegan diet, but not for ethical veganism or, or ecological veganism. That that does freak me out. But nevertheless, with that having been noted, the health aspect is really important. And it really does, I think, you know, galvanize and motivate people to keep going over the long, long term. And um, it, it does also make the protest-centered approach, you know, seem a bit seem a bit ridiculous. Mm, yeah. um, one of my Patreon supporters, I won't I won't name her. I could, but whatever. I'll leave it anonymous. One of my Patreon supporters uh, wrote to me recently saying, so her whole household is vegan, but her son saved up his own allowance money, and for whatever reason, insisted on buying chicken. So, and then this was debated between the husband and the wife. Like, okay, so it's his choice. Like, we've got to respect. I forget, the kid's 11 or something. Like, you know, he's, yeah. he's old enough to start making some choices. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, look, if it's his money and he's going to buy the chicken, we're not going to stop him, even though their household is vegan or whatever. So he, he bought this chicken uh, from a restaurant, you know, cooked, cooked chicken. And then he got horribly ill. He got something oh, like uh, salmonella poison. Yeah. So then the mom is, you know, whatever, cleaning up his vomit and cleaning up the mess the chicken made in the kitchen itself and all this stuff and feeling disgusted and there's the smell of the chicken in the house and, and the, the kid is sick and what have you. And I remember I, one of my first reactions I wrote back to her, I said, look, you know, if you put this in a movie or a sitcom, it would seem fake. I mean, it's too perfect, you know, so the kid from the vegan house rebels the against his parents. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it, you know, it's 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 kind of too perfect an example, yeah. um, but sure. I mean, you know, yeah, health, health, and so on can't be in the background. And health is what brought in you know people like uh, like Bill Clinton right. to to play their very strange role in the movement. But which is nevertheless, I mean, okay, Bill Clinton being vegan, it's it's more important than walking up to one more person on the street and telling them why are you wearing a fur coat or one more protest in front of uh, things. You know. Yeah, yeah, even though it's nothing you can do. I mean, it's, you have no role in somebody yeah. somebody in power becoming vegan, but... Yeah. yeah so. I do think, so look, I mean, just again, so for me, political activism is way broader and deeper than protests. Protesting is one thing, is one type of activity. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And political activism is all kinds of stuff. And if you guys watch my channel, unless you knew the channel, I talk a lot about examples like Mothers Against Drunk Driving. Mm -hmm. Mothers Against Drunk Driving is not a protest-based movement. Right. They do public education, mm -hmm. they do all kinds, but they, they literally show up in children's classrooms, yeah. talk about drunk driving. They have all these different formats of reaching out to the public, public education, and also reaching out to an influencing government. Well, it's in the past, but they changed laws everywhere. They changed laws about everything from seat belts to, you know, with the breathalyzer, what percentage of alcohol is acceptable. They influence government policy in a massive way. Yeah, right. 
Um, but they're not a protest-based movement. They're not. So politics is much bigger than, than protest. But I, I do have to say, you know, in a big way, um, one of the reasons why I'm not considering living in Asia long term mm -hmm. is that pull that I feel I need to be back. I need to be back somewhere yeah. where I can be part where of that political go, process. Yeah, yeah, you can go up to town hall and talk about how you want to change. Like th yeah. that's that's something like I've been interested in having the ability to go up and talk to the school board and say yes. like, I don't want there to be dairy posters in the school. Like I don't want yeah. kids to see this propaganda for the dairy well, industry. Why are you teaching kids that eggs are healthy? When yeah, not this kind of question. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, being able to be involved with. Yeah. A city. Well, you know, okay, sir, one, one topic leads to the other, but that was also funny. I've been doing this survey with, with my students. It was, it's their final oral exam, and many, many of the students for their final oral exam, they had a choice of what they wanted to talk about, and a lot of them talked about the importance of physical exercise, sport, phys ed, whatever you want to say, and, and physical health in that sense, sport, training, exercise. They, I, I don't know. I'm going to actually calculate what percentage. It seemed like 25% of the students chose to talk about the, how important sport was in their lives. Mm -hmm. I'll figure out the actual percentage at the end of the assignment. And it was interesting because when they were talking about that, many of them, what they were really talking about is their struggle as Chinese people to remain slim despite eating a diet that consists largely of pork fat, mm -hmm. you know, a very unhealthy, very high fat, oily, you know, but meat, it's a meat-based diet here, yeah. you know, it is now. It really is. Um, you know, uh, this, 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 they eat meat three meals a day. They're eating meat breakfast, lunch, and dinner, yep. in, even if it's in small portions. And they eat, and they eat yogurt here. Yogurt is big. They have, they have all this stuff. But it was interesting because when they were talking about how meaningful phys ed, physical education, was in their lives, it was like, well, think about how different it would be if we thought of that in terms of nutritional science. Mm, yeah. It was it, one of the options you gave. Did anybody choose that? I thought that was one of the was options. Was it? I didn't, I didn't give it to them. Okay. No, I didn't okay. give it to them. No, it's it not. It was on the list. It was on the paper. That you oh, okay, 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 okay. But yeah, sure, you could. Yeah, But I mean, in theory, you could choose nutritional science. Yeah. But in a sense, a lot of what they're talking about with sport and exercise is a struggle against their own ignorance of nutrition. And you know, I feel I'm a beneficiary. I, I look kind of way better than I should. I don't. I don't get that much exercise. I really don't. Uh, but you know, of looking way better than you should because you. you're not. You're not setting that. You're not creating that obstacle for yourself right. with the misunderstanding of health and diet. Yeah. Yeah, but it's also not true that going on a vegan diet will make you thin. <laughs> you yes. can still eat a lot on sure. a vegan diet. I actually sure. gained weight when I first went on a vegan diet. Yeah, and then, totally, yeah. totally understandable. <laughs> okay. But look, I, look, I mean, ultimately, veganism as a diet, I've never heard about any diet really being successful because of protest. Like, a, a protest-based diet or protest getting people to adopt a diet, that is really a, a stretch. It yeah. really is. Mm -hmm. It really is. And it's not comparable to, like think about instead the role of pro if peace protests or anti-nuclear protests. That's not asking you to change how you live 365 days a year. You know, like there were people, because the anti-nuclear thing went on for decades and decades. I would remember when I was a small child. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're against nuclear bombs. So realistically, maybe four times a year, you go to a protest against nuclear bombs. And the other thing, okay, the other thing is about those movements, everyone in them feels like an expert. Like a lot of you guys, are, but like everyone who was in the anti-nuclear, anti-war movement in the 1980s, they felt they knew everything about nuclear bombs. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, they're, they're not experts. They read a few pamphlets. Maybe they read one book or whatever, you know. But they knew nuclear waste is bad, nuclear wars. But they had this simplistic view. And they, all, they get an ego trip out of it. Mm -hmm. So maybe four times a year you go to a protest and you, you literally hold up a sign with a peace symbol on it. And, and they chant, no more nukes. And there's this... <laughs> Big payoff, right? There's this big sense of I'm better than everyone else. I'm an expert. They get, they get a lot out of it that way. And yeah, I feel veganism is the opposite in all these things. It's this morose, lonely, ethical burden. I don't feel great. On the contrary, it leads you, it leads you to regard your own parents as scumbags and shit. You know, all this, like, I have so many videos talking about this where, you know, you feel alienated from your own coworkers and your own family and your own culture. And uh, there's millions of animals dying every day anyway. You yeah. know, you're not doing anything to really help those animals. You're only, you're only doing your small part to not make things even worse. You know right. what I mean? Right. Is this, is this, uh, terrible, nightmarish 365 day of the year. I don't think. So yeah, so putting protest at the center of it, apart from questions of, of effectiveness, 
Um, that seems like a bit of a downward spiral to to madness. I know. Keeping it all the way real. <laughs> Yeah, but when you're in the face of, I feel especially ir- frustrated and irritated when somebody so close to me, like my own yeah. dad, would say, you know, nothing you're doing is changing things. There's, right. You know, animals are getting slaughtered every day. You're not changing anything. Yeah. That gives me even more fuel to want to say, yeah, I am changing something. Like, well, let's get out there and like <laughs> do right. something. But right. what? What do I do? Um, yeah. Well, look, 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 look. The most underrated form of activism is running a restaurant, yeah. running a vegan restaurant, running a vegan. Like, like, I mean, when you think about it, when you think about it, like, that maybe on a shallow level would be my answer is that, you know, it shouldn't be a protest centered movement. It should be a restaurant centered movement. Like it's I know, like it's weird how that becomes invisible within because most vegans are all the time obsessed with finding vegan restaurants. Like we're we're traveling, we're we're going to Beijing, we're flying to France, we're flying around the world, and of course the first thing you're doing is googling the vegan right. restaurants yeah. wherever it is you're you're going, yeah. right? Yeah. But the the effect on everyone, the effect on people who already are vegan, the effect on people who aren't vegan yet, who maybe go there with a friend, the people who have never even heard of veganism before, because I've seen that, I've been in vegan restaurants, and people came in who didn't know the meaning of the word vegan. Yeah. They just thought, oh, this is a nice restaurant or something. Like, oh, they have pancakes, whatever they, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Is, really, 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 like it seems like there's just not enough appreciation for the role of the, the restaurateur rather than the revolutionary. Mm-hmm. That's my exit line. Morty, it's a wrap. <laughs> Cut. Hard out.